Hey, this is Mark. Coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is Tuesday. Um, I guess across the Midwest there's quite a bit of cold weather going on, and we got about 20 below or so. It's pretty rugged, and it's blowing too, so that's why I'm inside. <clears throat> uh, I want to talk a little bit today. This is the farm, the uh, Homestead Cow Series. Talk about a term that I used. It was cow shares. All right, here in, uh, in Michigan, we're not allowed to sell raw milk. We can sell just about everything else, but not raw milk. And the reason that the state gives, who, who restricts that? It's the state restricts that. These are the same folks that will tell you um, that uh, there are thousands of feral swine running around, right? In reality, what's going on is the milk producers, you know, the conglomerate industrial milk producers, they do not want a bunch of guys like me that milk a few cows taking, taking market share from them. Because in reality, uh, if you milk 10 cows and you sell that milk for what it's worth, it's a nice little sideline and you can do pretty well with it. They don't want guys doing that. And that's the way it was done for years. So you may be asking, what's all this hullabaloo about raw milk anyway? Why do people want raw milk? I have customers, people that participate in our cow shares program, that drive 50 miles one way to get their milk weekly. Um, people that are drinking raw milk and uh, that are serious about it, a lot of them are uh, Weston A. Price people, uh, Weston A. Price Foundation, you can check that out. Um, I'm not going to debate the, the good and bad of raw milk here. You've got the internet, you can do all that yourself. But I'm just going to testify what I see is the people that participate in our raw milk program are some of the best looking, healthiest people that I, that I know. And they're, they're concerned about what they're eating and drinking. And milk, raw milk, is a very wholesome product. Very wholesome. Me and my kids have been drinking it. My kids have been brought up on it. So, of course, you know, the state is going to say, it's dangerous, it's dangerous. Don't drink milk, it's dangerous, it could kill you. But think about it. Every time they want to take something away from you, they scare you. They say, it's dangerous, it could kill you. Don't give it to your kids, no. But they don't have any problem with you giving your kids Cheetos or Mountain Dew. Or anything else like that. No problem there. And people actually, you know, we have problems in this country, health problems. But if you do a search on, on raw milk, <clears throat> I'm trying to get a comfortable spot here. You're not going to find a lot of people that are just dropping dead from raw milk. Um, I think people think that. And, uh, you know, the establishment believes that raw milk is bad. So let's say some kid shows up at the hospital they want to know what that kid ate in the last 24 hours. And some mother's going to say, Oh, I gave him a glass of raw milk. They're going to hang every sin known to man on that raw milk. Why not? Because it's already demonized. But, uh, you know, that's the way it is. All right, the way a, a cow share goes is you pay for a share of my herd. All right? You take possession of that via contract. And that entitles you to uh, the things that the herd produces. One of the things that the herd produces is milk. So you're not buying milk, you're paying room and board for that animal to live here. And that entitles you to come and pet the cow, and I guess you could have some manure if you want, but you can also have the milk. And the way we do it, it kind of pencils out to about eight bucks a gallon and, uh, you know, people that are in our club know that they can get it a little cheaper, but they know that they can pay out way more for it, too. I will tell you what we do with our milk. It's, it's almost custom-made milk. Um, our cows are jerseys, so they have a high butter fat content, and we feed them almost exclusively uh, grass. So in the summertime, that's all they get is grass, pasture. In the wintertime... To coax them to come in to get milked, we'll give them a cup of 
a small grain mix. When it's real cold like this, oh, there's a piece of bread. I'll even give them uh, a little bit more. Um, we do get bread from an organic dairy, I mean an organic uh, bakery. And this is from when I ran out of grain. I broke some of this up for them just to coax them to come in. Because cows are rumens, they're designed to eat grass. They're not designed to eat corn silage. They're not designed to eat corn. I mean, you can feed it to them, but the same as you can feed a person Cheetos. It's not going to work. It's not going to be make a healthy body, but it'll make a, a big body. And um, so you can do that, but you don't get wholesome milk out of it. And it doesn't really, you know, I'm not here to bash store milk, but what they do is they take most of the good stuff out of it, and then they sell you the dishwater that's left over and you say well you know why should I pay eight bucks to get milk from you when I can get it at the store for three bucks or four bucks or whatever well we don't take anything out of our milk and we pasture our cows which means we rotationally graze them in the summertime it takes a lot of work and then we're milking a small number of cows in a non-factory setting so the animals are not stressed out and it takes a little extra time I think it's a fair um, a fair exchange, or I, I wouldn't do it. Okay, well that's it for cow shares uh, and raw milk. Um, not sure what I'm going to do tomorrow, but I'll, I'll see you then.